This video will walk you through how to make a stoplight using a J frame and a J panel in Java. To begin, we're going to create a new J frame and a new J panel to add our components to. But before we add the new J panel, we're going to create our stoplight panel. To do that, I'm going to create another class and call it the stoplight panel. I don't need a public static void main whenever I create the stoplight panel, but instead it's going to extend J panel so that I can receive the methods and the uh, other components that come with extending a class. One of the first things I'll need inside of my JPanel class is a JPanel constructor, and I do that just by using the class name with the uh, access modifier public. And right now, I'll just put a button on there. Now that I've got my button added to the panel, I'm going to add the panel to the J frame. So I'm going to pop back over here to the class that has my public static void main in it and create a new instance of the J panel. And I'm going to add the panel to the frame. And I need to set some size and some close operations and set it to be visible. So now if I launch this, you'll see I've got my panel, actually my frame, I have my panel added to my frame, and inside my panel I have a switch button. So now let's go ahead and let's create our stoplight drawing. For that I'm going to need a class, and I'm going to call it stoplight drawing. And this is where all of the components are going to go to make the circles and the squares and everything uh, in order to actually draw the stoplight. I need this to extend a J component, and whenever I do that, I'm going to actually have to implement a method in order to get the component to paint. And that method is called public void paint component, and the C does have to be capitalized, and it's just one component, and it takes in a graphics parameter. Now that I've got this component set up, I'm actually going to preset some colors up here outside of the paint component method so that I have access to them throughout the whole class. Because we're also going to create another method in here in order to change the color, and that will help us adjust the colors as we press the button. So I'm going to create three additional colors, the red, the, um, the go to the slow and the stop for our buttons, and we'll have them just default to a gray for right now so that they're not on. Now I'm ready to create my rectangle, and then I'll add uh, create three ovals that I that I'll fill with the colors. This color will start with making the outside box. I don't yet have the stoplight drawing added to my panel, so if I test it at this point, I'm not going to see that box yet. So let's go ahead and add that component, the drawing, so we can see it as we're adding the components to it. So I'll flip back over here to my J panel that's called Stoplight Panel, and I'm going to create a global instance of the stoplight drawing, and then we'll use that stoplight drawing uh, to, first of all, put it on the panel, but then we'll use that panel uh, object to actually change the colors. So we'll make it global so that we can use it both in the constructor and both in a button listener whenever, um, so that we know whenever we're ready to change the color. So now I've created an instance of it. I need to set the preferred size in order to get a, a J component to display.
And then I, asked, I also need to add the panel, or add the stoplight drawing to the panel. Now at this point, whenever I run it, I should see my yellow box around the outside. I can draw my black border over here inside my stoplight drawing by setting the color to black. And then instead of using a fill rectangle, if I use a draw rectangle, that will just draw the line on the outside. So I'll use the same dimensions as before. And there's my stoplight box plus a black border around the outside. Now I'm ready to draw my circles. And the best way that I've found to approach this is to write down your dimensions on a sheet of paper and then kind of guess where they need to go. So we have three ovals. One needs to go right in the middle, one needs to go higher, and one needs to go lower. So to take the guesswork out of that, I've just come up with the dimensions that I'll use. But I would recommend drawing it out and using actually your numbers to divide them in half and figuring out where the midpoint would be. Right now, my ovals are going to be black because I haven't changed the color yet, but we will go through that and do that. You'll see I've got my three ovals on here that are actually circles. They're circles because of the same width and height. And you can see I use 50 as my midpoint all the way through here. Uh, whenever you look at the numbers, 50 is my x value, how far over it was moved, and then this value is how far down it was down, how far down it was moved. So this one was 30, this one's 100 from the top, and this is 170, uh, 170 pixels from the top. Now I'm going to do a little bit of changing so that uh, we can get the colors to show up. So they should all now appear gray. And we'll make the top one the active one to begin with. So the way that I change that is just up here, all I do is change the color to red. And that will make the first one active. So what I need to do is every time this button is pushed, I need to cycle from red to green. And then if it's pushed again, green to yellow. And then pushed again, yellow to red. So what I need is some way to determine what the active light is. Several different ways I could do this. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to make a string that holds the active light color in it. And right now the active light is red. So if the active light is red and the button is pushed, then we need to change the active light to green and make the go color change. So what that ends up being is just an if statement. And that if statement is going to go outside of the paint component. And when it's triggered, we're going to change some values. And then we will repaint the stoplight with the new values that are set. So let's call this method change color doesn't take any parameters in, but let's go ahead and let's say if the active light is green, or I'm sorry, if the active light is red, then let's change the active light to green. And let's make it so that the green light is active from gray to green. And we actually need to make the red light so that it is gray because it's no longer active. So I'm actually going to show you a little shortcut for that. If we just automatically make all the lights gray except for the one that is changing, it'll save us a little bit of time, a little bit of code. So I'm going to modify this so that whenever this is clicked, all of them are changed to gray first until we execute the if statement. Now I need something that says, hey, okay, I'm done with this. Now go repaint this drawing again with the new colors that are set in. And there's a special method for that. It's going to go at the very bottom, and it's called repaint. So it's going to go inside of this method, but outside of the if statement. So if we run it now, it's still not going to work. But whenever I click my switch, it's going to run this change color method and change, find out that the active light is red and it's going to change the active light to green. Set this, um, the option for the go circle to be green and then it's going to repaint that. But right now we don't have any click listeners set up on our button so our button doesn't do anything. 
So let's jump over to our panel and let's add some click listeners. So inside of our stoplight panel, let's create a class called button listener. And this is just an inner class, so I could also create it outside, but um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to create it inside of here. And it's going to implement an interface called action listener. And remember, whenever you implement an interface, you have to agree to their terms. So we need to not only import it, we need to uh, add the unimplemented methods. There's just one. It's called action performed. And this action performed will be what do we want to happen after we find that there's a button click. Well, what we want to happen is we want the light to change colors. So we'll call this method to change colors to find out what the active light is, change the color, and repaint it. Now I need to add that button listener to the actual button that we have. So I'm going to create a new instance of the button listener, call it a local variable L inside of my constructor. Then I need to add this button listener to the change button. So I'm going to add an action listener on L. There we go. And now, whenever I click this button, it's listening for a click on there. And once it finds that click, it recognizes that it's been clicked. It calls the action perform method. And it goes over here to uh, our light.changeColor. So our light is a part of our stoplight drawing, what we refer to it as locally. And it goes over here to our change color. Jumps in here, change color, first of all, sets every color of the stoplight to gray. And then it decides what the active light is. So we need to do something for our yellow and for our green as well. If we have a um, active light of green, we need to change that to yellow. And we need to change our slow color from gray to be, um, I know for the orange shows up a little bit better since we have our background of yellow. Otherwise, then that means it's currently yellow. We've got to change it to red. Check our logic. Green, yellow, red. There we go. And there's our stoplight. So let's do a quick overview. We started with a main, and inside of the stoplight main class, we had the main method. We created an instance of a frame and a panel, and the panel was based off of our stoplight panel. In order for it to be based off of our stoplight panel, our stoplight panel had to extend J panel, which it did. I'll pop back over here, we added the panel to the frame, we set the size, we set how we close it, and then we had to set the frame to be visible. Let's look at that J panel. First thing we did, we started with a constructor. We created our stoplight drawing and our button. We had to set the preferred size for anything that extends a J component. So our stoplight drawing extends our J component. We created a button listener with the action performed method and added that button listener to the change button. And then we added those two components to our J panel. Now when a click is registered on our button, it comes down here and it performs whatever's inside of the action perform me method. And that's called, we uh, call change color for our stoplight. So we jump over here to our stoplight. We set, start by changing all of our colors to gray. And then we go through, we say if it's red, now our active light is green and let's change that color to green. If it's already green, that means the next one in the sequence is yellow. So let's change it to yellow, change our slow color. Or if it's already yellow, then we're going to change it to red, and we're going to make our red active. And then we call repaint. And repaint takes the new values that we have set for our global variables of our colors, because we set them outside of our methods, but still inside of the class that makes them global. And we call our paint component only one, uh, and where we set our color, our back, our uh, rectangle around the stoplight, and then whatever colors that we've changed it to will recolor, will repaint with those respective colors that were just changed below. And that is how we get our stoplight to work.